Okay, here we are, Francis Zhu and I. Hi. And today we're going to talk about our recent prompts and guidances toward a liquid diet. <laughs> which is kind of interesting because we just keep following our prompts and that's something that came in and and something that I've been feeling for a while just intuitively because I've been having shakes and malts and green drinks and different things but yeah it's feeling more and more like to uh, to go along here we have some travels coming up and it gives us a good opportunity to uh, go liquid <laughs> so to speak yeah I like I like to to talk about this topic um, diet because it seems like there are so many questions around this topic um, for the purpose of probably um, for healing, you know, of the body or for, for the uh, purpose of having the body reach a certain state. Um, I guess this is a topic that I have been investing a lot of mind energy in um, particularly in the beginning years before I started uh, study the course I remember I went into a raw food diet very uh, fully committed in a very fully committed way for about a year and really experienced a lot of uh, benefit of healing physical healing and yet when I started a Course in Miracles, um, I realized that the goal that I had in mind was conflicting because I had the goal of, um, you know, having the cleanest food and had the body um, be healed. And the Course is saying you cannot have any other goals except the peace of mind. So I immediately felt that I, my goal was not the same as taught by the course so I at that point I thought you know I had to make a choice and I did I let go of this diet you know the thinking and also inform as well and since I joined you David I felt because at that point your the way that you have been guided till that point was it was served and it was very inspiring you know and so I felt I was you know to 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 basically do that and I just follow that kind of um, mindset and allow whatever served um, yeah just be accepted fully and and yet yeah, there is something that started to to show up as an inspiration of um, more like a toward breatharian breatharianism, mm -hmm. and that inspiration I have to say I have been having for a long time, a long time. Like I always felt very drawn to read about it and watch videos about it. And was very very excited about the fact that this is true is possible and and then just about a week ago I felt just this um, feeling and so I talked to the spirit I said why do I keep feeling this inspiration and yet there seemed to be a gap between you know what my, what I eat and where this huge inspiration is and if it is truly the direction, then I need support. I am asking for support. And that was the same day that I called you, David, to say, you know, what is that I'm, you know, going through? And without knowing this prayer, you actually said, I'm going on a liquid diet and we can do it together. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh my God, that is so supportive because it's hard. And you also said something that was really inspiring to me. You said, food is like life or the egoic life is it's so condi it's such a conditioning um it's very hard to 
you know, to go through this undoing about that area because it is directly associated with the belief that we're human beings and we need food to nurture us and sustain us. And being, you know, I feel like I've experienced the difficulty of of even the letting go or even just to minimize it, how difficult it is. It's like an addiction. It feels like an addiction. Whether it brings joy or inspiration, the, the, the body just wants to keep going there because of the heavy conditioning. So... Yeah, it's just, it's actually just, when we talk about fasting, a lot of times people think about it as not eating, but a lot of times it you can bring it back to the mind level. It's just part of the mind training of, of emptying the mind, you might say. And it's been interesting for me over the years because I did go to Australia one time and uh, that uh, Asira, who had been through many disciplines, Eastern disciplines, and and uh, basically lots of meditation and a pretty disciplined life in her spiritual journey. She, she had talked to me, she had kind of very specific foods that she could eat and couldn't eat, and which was kind of fascinating to me, just because my path had always been eat what's served, so mm. there really wasn't that kind of a experience I was having at the time, but it mm. was like, I just took note of, hmm, that's kind of interesting with all mm. of her meditation, there's mm. foods that she can't eat and can't eat. And then, um, then I was paired up one time, another time, down in Australia with a breatharian who taught alongside me and presented alongside me in one of my gatherings. I don't think I had even heard much of breatharians before I met her, mm. and she, uh, you know, was an inspiration of just uh, not really taking solid foods, occasionally having a cup of tea or something, but, mm. but basically um, being a breatharian. And then, yeah, so we've talked about it on and off, but it seems like intuitively now it seems to be coming in as a guidance. So it's good e even to be traveling and doing that. That's a bit odd usually because hosts have, they want to love you and they want to, you know, either cook for you or take you out to eat or different kind of things and you can still have, we can still do mm. the joinings with them but, yeah, just kind of interesting uh, going away from solid foods and, yeah, yeah that symbol. Yeah. Yeah, I have read a lot about it, I and mean, it's not a um, a strange. Um, actually, it's not a strange uh, concept or regime in China. Um, you know, even growing up, I I've heard a lot of not normal people living in normal life, of course, but people who, you know, in different religions or um, if they. Yeah, they want to achieve certain state of mind. They go into a very extensive period of fasting, um, and it's yeah, it's just not strange at all. And I n noticed that I yeah loved read lo loved reading about them and loved hearing people talking about the real examples. And I guess right now it's not even. To achieve a particular goal, like that's the main difference. When I was doing a different health kind of healthy diets before, it was always to achieve a goal of body being the end result, you know, to somehow provide health for the body. But right now, it's not really the goal, and the goal is following, I guess, following the present inspiration and following the present um, prompt. Because even when I was on this full, clean, raw food diet for a year, um, I noticed actually there is a plateau, you know, there is always a place where your body seemed to reflect some kind of healing aspect, but, it, but it's not gonna be the heal all the sick that's not the solution. You realize that 
you know, whatever that comes in the mind is still going to be reflected in the body as a symptom, regardless of what you put in your mouth. It's, it's in the end, at the end of it, I just realized the thinking is, is actually the, the cause. So now, you know, to start to even, um, yeah, reduce the solid food intake is more around, let's just, you know, commit to the spirit, commit to the spirit's guidance and not necessarily feeling the temptation to, I mean, I would feel the temptation probably, but more is like a commitment to the spirit. Yeah, I think it's pretty common that people know of the, the Bible and Jesus and his teachings um, being out teaching for days and the apostles getting kind of worried that he wasn't getting enough to eat and and he would make some comment to them such as, you know, I have, I have, um, I'm sustained by mana from heaven or something to that effect. And, and then it's interesting, the word mana from heaven, uh, which is like a sustenance of, of food or a sustenance from heaven, it's in the Eastern tradition, of the Indian tradition, uh, where they talk about the prana energy and, and uh, pranic healing and so forth. But that's almost like a synonym for the mana from heaven is the prana energy where it's it's sustained through through energy through light and uh, so I have had some people even when I've mentioned breatharianism in a talk or something like that they'll say do you really do you, do you really think in our in our generation that there will be those but like you say in China and different traditions, it's not seen as such a, a far out or a lofty thing, it's, uh, it's more common. So, truly it's, we're just following a version of the Course in Miracles workbook lesson, I will step back and let him lead the way, just following guidance, and that's just what seems to be appearing now. And uh, so it's joyful just to, to follow. And there's not a sense of causation with it, of doing it for something else, other <laughs> than just listen and follow. Not, you know, we know that health is not of the body, and therefore the mechanisms of health are forgiveness in yeah. the mind, mm -hmm. and uh, purification of thought. And uh, as Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the pure of heart, for they shall see God. And uh, he made some references to, it's not what you put in your mouth, it's what proceeds forth from the heart that's important. And so, yeah, the focus is totally on that, and uh, it's not a dietary change or dietary goal or anything of the sort. No, not at all, because today you said, when we were talking about it, you said, don't eat what I eat, but think what I think. And that's, <laughs> I guess summarizes, you know, I guess we're just wanting to put it out there, the, the guidance and share with you all, but in the end we're only doing it because it came, it came in pretty strongly as a guidance, as a present inspiration. Yeah, yeah somebody typed me out a little cryptic little message recently on Facebook, it just said, eat with spirit, and so Really, the, how do you do that? Well, you you think with God, you you know, let all my thoughts be one with God and be in alignment with God. And so, by thinking with God or or following the guidance of the Holy Spirit, then then you might say, think with God and do as you may, or or uh, watch watch the world. And so that's really what this is in alignment with. Mm. Just a, a guidance or a prompt coming in. Mm. And uh, Gandhi was pretty famous too. Uh, I read his autobiography and I think the subtitle of his autobiography was something to the effect of My, my Experiments with Truth, where he was always working with, with his intuitive feelings and aligning and uh, coming to a sense of integrity. But um, in that sense, he saw them as experiments. I think we see him more as just following guidances, mm. and for the sake of following the guidances, you yeah. know, that that's what the, the healing is. It's listen and follow, and 
be very intuitive. So, so it's just an interesting, uh, interesting watching that's happening. <laughs> yeah. So we'll be continuing on our travels tomorrow morning, getting up very early to head towards England, London Heathrow. And then Cork. And then off to Cork after visiting with my friend Maria mm -hmm. Diaz and her husband, and then off to stay with uh, at a friend's house and, and meet friends and uh, do a gathering up there in Cork on Sunday afternoon. And so that's fun, and uh, as we move along, we may be just uh, visiting people instead yeah. of uh, necessarily doing gatherings like we're doing with Maria. We're just stopping and, and visiting with her and her husband and staying overnight. But uh, yeah, so we have our opportunities to, to see what flows in with our liquid. Yeah, we'll, we'll probably share along the way too if there's new topics and different things coming in for us to share with you guys. And also next, I do want to mention next week, next Thursday, August 25th, we have a gathering in East Sussex, England. And then on Saturday we have one in uh, Worcester. Is that next week or the following week? It's the coming week. The coming week. So we get, oh, huh. I think we get back on oh, yeah, you're Tuesday, right. then it's another, so it's oh, the week sorry. after next. Yeah. <laughs> August 24th and August 20th, no, August 25th and August 27th. Sussex and Worcester. Yeah, hope to see you there in England. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Okay. Happy travels. <laughs> Sending you love. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye. -bye. Bye.